Happy Monday to you. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Today we're going to start off this week with teaching your dog how to go to place. So the biggest difference between place and go to is you're actually sending your dog to go do the command place, which is really handy. I tell you what, I use it all the time. I can go to my door with Captain, uh, identify someone I'm going to invite to my home and tell him place. And there he goes. There's nothing like going to a client's house and watching a dog cut through the den, cut through the kitchen, go all the way to the back. I've even seen dogs turn around and go up the stairs and go to a cot. So it's a way cool command, a very handy command to, to use, especially when you have guests coming over your house or you're just doing anything around your house that you need to send your dog somewhere else other than to a crate or to the laundry room and so on and so forth. Okay, so how do you train go to place? Well, number one, the obvious thing is make sure they know place. Train that first. Follow the videos that we've shot back in the past here on place. Follow all those rules about the complex signal, uh, about what we say, marking the behavior. Make sure your dog knows place first. And then after that, we start to take next steps. Uh, again, I'm joined by Joshua here today. He's our training supervisor here at Tame the Wild. And we have five-month-old Maisie, five months old. She's here for a board and train program, and she's going to show her stuff. <laughs> she's so cute. Oh, what a cutie she is. Pure she, puppy. A pure puppy all day long. Puppy, 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 more puppy. Okay, when we first start off with training the go-to place, we call it directed motivation. Directed. We're directing the dog to go to the cot, and we're going to motivate the dog to do so. And the first thing that we always try is food. Have some delicious treats. So, Joshua, let's do that, buddy. So many times, we can usually get someone else. If you don't have anyone else, you yourself come up, show the dog the treat right here on the cot, and if you place it on the cot, place it on the further end of the cot so the dog has to go all the way on from this direction here. You see how she already wants, she al already wants to go. She already is ready to go. Place. And we say place, and the dog hops on the cot. I recommend that you start this behavior with a long line. Why? In case the dog goes by the cot. It doesn't go on the cot. Maybe there's a treat that got spilled over here. Maybe there's a toy. Maybe there's someone else entering the room. Make sure you always have control. We don't allow big mistakes. So Josh was back up a little bit more. Okay, so now this is kind of dancing. In the beginning, well, actually, Josh, will come forward a little bit if you would. In the beginning, we start off about six feet away, about six feet, just far enough away for the dog to actually see us put the treat right there on the cot, and then we release. Place. The command is place. The dog goes on the cot. And then we gradually back up to a distance of about 10 feet. We'll let her see the treat from up close, right there. Back the dog up. And you'll notice one thing that Josh was doing here, and he'll talk about this here in a second. I'll pass the microphone over to him, is he is getting the dog basically organized and focused. Uh, what will happen is that if you do this too quickly, it can become very hectic, very frenetic. The dog is just crazed. I just want the treat. I just want the treat. I just want the treat. Whereas when you make them sit, listen to her. It's quiet. She's calm. He's getting her focused on the task at hand. And not only that, but this starts becoming more real life. Real life, right? In the beginning stages. Hey, Later, we won't have a treat on your cot, but you may sit because we just answered the door. We're about to answer the door. And you'll have to go to a cot that may or may not have a treat. And that's called a variable reinforcement. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so right now he's getting the dog calm, focused, organizing what's about to occur, and now we launch the dog. Very good. And it's not just the word place. If you've been watching Joshua, notice he kind of steps forward with one leg and sweeps that hand, pointing in the direction of that cot, 
pointing. Again, dogs learn with their eyes first. Their eyes first. Okay, so again, now, another thing that Joshua likes to do is when he starts working on distance, he'll actually have someone, in other words, start lining the dog up in one spot only, and then we will move the cot. So it's not really, the, the distance is not the dog going further and further away, it's the cot going further and further away. And this really works well because, especially for some beginning dogs, if they get a little confused, to always have this solid reference point. You can start off like at the end of a sofa, at, the, at a hall closet, a coat rack, something that the dog can identify with and then go. Identify with and then go. So try them both. Either take the dog away from the cot and launch or keep the dog in the same spot and move the cot further and further away. But again, always show the dog the treat. Place the treat, Place and now we're ready to go. Very good. Now, Joshua, if you'll show one, pretend I'm not here. So show how you place the treat and how you do this on your own. Prevent. Don't let them get up on the cot. Good point. Do not allow the dog to get on the cot at that moment because otherwise that is now placed and you are obliged to complete the complex signal to get the dog off. So he's the one that put the treat on. In this particular technique, he took the dog away from the cot instead of moving the cot. And now he's going to send. Very good. Awesome. Very good. You know, in that reference point, hey, Evan, come on over here. I want to draw something on this board just real quick. Again, back in my shoots and days, back in the day, they always, when they held competitions, they did it on football fields or soccer fields. So on a football field back in then, they had goalposts. So I'm going to do my best to kind of draw a goalpost. And you've got all these lines. When training, we, we used... Toys, and Joshua's going to talk about toys here in a second, why you should use them, why you shouldn't use them. We mostly believe in when you're training place, we don't use the toy. But again, we want you to have many tools in your tool bag. But in this particular scenario here, I always had dogs that were super ball motivated. Ball motivated. You've seen in previous videos where I had that ball on a rope for Captain. Still do. Man, you can wing that thing the whole length of a football field if you want to. Well, what we would do is be something similar to place, except it's more of a fetch, more go get the ball. But in this one particular exercise, you would be here with your dog. The judge would tell you, send your dog. And you give some command like, Varouse, to go out. And the dog would race full speed in the direction that you're pointing until you are given the command by the judge to tell your dog to stop and lie down. So the dog is going full speed, probably about 25 miles per hour, flat out, and you yell, plots, and plots is to lay down, German for place, and the dog had to immediately stop, and when, you, when they do this right, it's really cool, because early mornings, there'll be a little bit of dew out there, and you'll see them slide a little bit and turn and face you. Very impressive. Well, the way that thing got trained is the same way that we're doing this place. The ball that the dog loves so much, at first, is lying here, and you send the dog to get the ball, send the dog to get the ball, Varouse, 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 and then further away, Varouse, further away, Varouse, and finally all the way down here, where? By this goal post, always moving in the direction of the goal post, always moving in that direction. And now what happens is that on the actual competition day, the dog doesn't realize that there's not actually a ball down there. It's just that they've been sent towards that goal post and they've gotten that ball a good 200, 300 times. They don't realize there's no ball. So when you send them, they tear out to go get the ball. And suddenly you disrupt them with the command, plots. And now they have to obey that command. And in their minds, those poor dogs never knew there wasn't a ball there. So that's kind of how we do the send to place. There's a treat, there's a treat, there's a treat, there's a treat. Scheduled reinforcement, and then eventually, there's no treat. It's called a variable reinforcement. Sometimes there will be a treat, sometimes there won't. Okay, now moving on from here, once you've trained place 
from a good distance, anywhere from, again, 15, probably 20 feet away, as the size of your house or your apartment permits, you now want to start training the dog to go to place out of sight. But before you do that, one of the things that we do around here is we put obstacles. Y'all, so okay? So meaning we require the dog to go around objects to get to the cot. So we recommend that you do the same thing. Put obstacles in front of the cot first, making the dog navigate its way around to get to the place cot. And so I, I'm going to have the cot in a direct line. So they here. Tell them what you want. I have the, the, the obstacle here, but I'm not going to start where the obstacle is directly in between me and the dog. I'm going to give the dog a line of sight to the cot and then slowly move the, uh, the obstacle between to where it almost, uh, you know, to where they can't see the cot behind the obstacle. Okay. And you notice on this one, the treat wasn't already on the cot. Maisie has kind of danced to that point now, where there may be a treat on the cot, that there may not. There you may get a treat from the trainer. You may not. It's variable reinforcement. I always tell people, you want to know how powerful that is, simply go to Las Vegas. Variable reinforcement. You don't get the winnings every time you pull on the one-armed bandit. And there you go. And you see Maisie go around the obstacles. And then after that, we start adding more and more obstacles before we move to out of sight. So we'll do one more real quick. Three. Place. Awesome. Way to go. Good girl. And again, a five-month-old puppy. All right, so once you now have finished completing obstacle works, make it as involved as you can. Make them have to weave through something, go around something, sometimes even over something is really handy to do. And then after that, you now start to place it around the corner just like you're going to do out of sight place work. And what we will do is lead the dog up to just around the corner where they can just make out the edge of it, maybe take them around, show the cots there a few times, take them around, show that the cot's there a few times, and then release the dog from a short distance then further and further and further away. And then it just starts to build from there. So Josh is going to talk to you about a couple tips when it comes to uh, what we call after the initial foundational training is done. A um, couple things is always have a good strategy of where you're going to place your cot when you start using it practically because it doesn't do you any good if, say, this door here is your front door, does you no good to place your cot right next to the door or, or really anywhere in that hallway? Have the dog back there, okay? So strategy of where your cot is is huge, is huge. The second thing is, is wherever your cot is at, practice sending your dog, the start point, where you send the dog from. Practice that with the idea in mind, where am I often going to send my dog from? So key points for me is front door, People knock on the door, dog's right there at the front door. I send my dogs to their place caught from the front door quite often. Um, I enter my side door at my house. I don't enter the front door. So I often send my dogs from that because if they're greeting me here and I've got hands full of groceries or something, place, that's a good point to, to practice sending your dog from. So think of things like that. Sitting down, it, this me sending the dog like so is a much different signal than me sending the dog like so. So practicing different body positionings and things like that is also beneficial. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it as far as the tips I have. Very good. Well, I thought you were more country. I thought you entered your house through the back door, not through any <laughs> side door or whatever. I, you know, you're all from Missouri and everything. No, a big shout out to Missouri. We have so many wonderful friends and clients from there, and I love the landscape of Missouri. But yeah, we, we kid Joshua all the time. He, he's country boy here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Misery. All right, guys. Well, that's sending your dog to place. Teach your dog how to go to place. These are just some fundamental steps. Maybe just hopefully enough of them to get you started on that journey. In a later video, we'll show more advanced go to place. 
will actually show it in a home and you can see how it gets done. You can see a dog go upstairs to go into a place caught around the corner. What do we look for? How do we correct mistakes? Uh, we definitely use the word no if they don't use it correctly. That was in yesterday's video. It's all about timing. It's all about consistency. And no matter what, don't make the big mistake of allowing big mistakes. And then what happens here is you just go too far too soon. That brings up another point. Brian mentioned big mistakes, and I know earlier we mentioned toys. Um, that's one of the, the things that I don't particularly like using with go to places, the toys. Now, I, I will say I have used them and I've, I've had success, but it's far more times it does not work than it does work. Um, the dog that I've had success with in that, the dog already knew out, leave it. Um, so therefore, if, if things failed, the toy fell off the cot or anything like that, then I was able to say, leave it, and I didn't ruin my stay. Because that's the thing I'm most worried about ruining is if the, if the toy is on the cot, the dog jumps on the cot and the toy goes that way, well, the dog's going to go that way as well. So you're, you're ultimately going to train the dog that I'm going to send you to place, but once you get there, you don't necessarily have to stay, and that's not the idea of what we're wanting to train the dog. So I encourage you to not use toys if food's not working, um, if the, the directional motivation is not necessarily working for you, you can try that toy if you know your dog likes that toy, but if it starts to ruin your stay, that is much more important than sending your dog to place. So I would, I would encourage you to stop immediately if it starts to ruin your stay. Yeah, I'm glad you remember to talk about that, Joshua, because uh, I mentioned earlier that we would. Uh, so many times these cots are really pliable, they bend, and it can almost serve like a trampoline. Kid you not, the ball is sitting right there on the cot, and the second the dog dives on that cot, because they're coming with speed, they're really motivated for that ball, boom, they hit the cot and it launches the ball, and the dog just barely touches the cot, and now it's after the ball. And that's called a big mistake. You're not allowed to get off that cot once you get on it without the complex signal being performed all three steps. Uh, so that's why we just don't really encourage the ball if you do or a toy. I probably started with a short leash and only about three feet away. Place, good, I got control back a little bit further. Or slow their speed, slow it down. Yeah, you can go from here, place, but we're going together and then take the dog to it. Just keep everything under control. But I've seen these balls and even stuffed animals, they're gone. It was amazing how they launch. So some good points there for training your dog to go to place. Give these things a shot. Uh, give us some feedback on it. And if you have questions that we didn't cover part and you kind of got stuck somewhere, <laughs> reach out to us. We'll make sure we, we stick it in place there. Make sure you get it. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy this Monday. Make a great training day and start working on it. If your dog already knows place, do yourself a favor and your dog a favor. Start training. Go to place. Go to place. Have a great day, guys. Good job, Maisie Dog. You did good, baby. She's so good. She is. She's awesome. She's a good girl.